In the first chapter of the History of the Crusades by Stephen Runciman, he provides an overview and introduction to what would become known as the First Crusade. He begins with a brief history lesson on how Christianity had spread throughout Europe in previous centuries before delving into why this particular crusade was so important for European Christians at that time. In 1095 Pope Urban II called upon all Christian knights from across Europe to join him in Jerusalem and fight against Muslim forces who were occupying it, thus beginning one of the most significant events in medieval history, the First Crusade. This call to arms sparked off a wave of enthusiasm among many Europeans eager to take part, resulting in thousands joining up under various leaders such as Godfrey de Bouillon or Raymond for Count of Toulouse amongst others. As they marched through Asia Minor towards their destination there were numerous battles fought along the way which resulted not only victories but also losses too, something which is often overlooked when discussing these crusading expeditions today due to its romanticized image within popular culture over recent years. Ultimately though after five long years since setting out, the combined force eventually reached Jerusalem whereupon they successfully captured it back from Islamic rule much thanks largely down those brave men who answered Pope Ibn's plea some five years earlier. In 1099, the First Crusade had succeeded in capturing Jerusalem and establishing a Latin kingdom there. The new rulers of the city were Godfrey de Bouillon, who was elected as its first ruler, his brother Baldwin I became king of Edessa after him. In 1119-20, Folkvi took over from Baldwin I to become king of Jerusalem and he set about consolidating power by creating alliances with other crusader states such as Antioch and Tripoli. He also sought to expand their territory through military campaigns against Muslim forces in Syria but these efforts ultimately failed due to lack of resources or support from Europe at that time. During this period however some important fortifications were built around cities like Acre which helped protect them during later sieges when they came under attack again from Saladin's armies, 1187. Folk's son Amalric II continued on where his father left off trying unsuccessfully once more for expansion into Egypt before being replaced by Guy de Lusignan following an internal dispute between nobles within the kingdom itself, 1192. Under Guy's rule further attempts at conquest occurred including one led personally by Richard Lionheart though it too ended without success despite initial gains made near Jaffa, 1191-92. Afterward tensions increased between Christians living inside Palestine versus those outside leading up until 1244 when Muslims finally captured Jerusalem back permanently ending any hope for Christian control over holy land sites forevermore. In 1145, Pope Eugenius III proclaimed the Second Crusade in response to a call for help from Edessa. The French King Louis VII and German Emperor Conrad III led their armies eastward but failed to capture Damascus or Jerusalem. In 1152, after two years of siege at Damascus by both Christian forces and Muslim defenders under Nur ad-Din Zangi, an agreement was reached whereby Christians were allowed access into the city as pilgrims while Muslims retained control over it politically. Meanwhile in Palestine, Baldwin III had succeeded his father Folk V as king, he captured Ascalon, 1153, which became one of the most important ports on the Mediterranean coast during this period. He also made alliances with various local rulers such as Reynald de Chatillon who helped him expand crusader territory further south towards Egypt's borderlands where they encountered resistance from Saladin's troops stationed there since 1169 CE when he took power following death of his predecessor Nureddin Mahmud II, Nur al-Din. This resulted in several battles between them including Battle Arsif, 1191, Siege Acre, 1189-91, before finally culminating with Treaty Ramla signed 1192 that ended hostilities temporarily until 1202 when war broke out again due largely increased tensions caused by European crusaders' attempts convert locals forcibly Christianity against wishes many native inhabitants living region around time. 
The Third Crusade began in 1189 when Emperor Frederick Barbarossa of Germany set out to the Holy Land. He was drowned on his way and never reached Palestine, but he had inspired a great wave of enthusiasm for crusading throughout Europe. The kings Philip Augustus II of France and Richard I, the Lionheart, of England both took up the cross. They were joined by Leopold V, Duke of Austria who also wanted to take part in this crusade. In 1190 all three armies met at Acre where Saladin's forces were besieging it from outside its walls while inside there was an internal struggle between two Muslim factions one led by Conrad de Montferrat representing Gaidalu Signan as king of Jerusalem, another faction supported Ismail Ibn Nur ad-Din Zangi ruler over Aleppo and Mosul which opposed him claiming that title belonged rightfully to them instead. After some negotiations with Saladin, Richard managed to break through siege lines allowing supplies into city thus saving it from starvation. However due their differences neither side could agree upon terms so war continued until finally after two years stalemate ended with treaties signed whereby Muslims kept control over most holy sites including Temple Mount yet Christians got access rights granted along other concessions such as free passage across territories controlled by either party without fear or harm being done unto them. This treaty marked end Third Crusade though hostilities would continue intermittently afterwards till 1291 when last Christian stronghold fell ending 200-year-long era crusades. The Fourth Crusade was launched in 1202 with the intention of recapturing Jerusalem from Muslim rule. However, Due to a lack of funds and internal divisions among its leaders, it instead diverted towards Constantinople where they sacked the city after an extended siege. This marked a major turning point for both Latin Christianity and Byzantium as their relationship deteriorated further following this event which ultimately led to the fall of Constantinople in 1453 at the hands of Ottoman Turks. The crusade also had far-reaching consequences on Europe itself as Venice emerged stronger than ever before while other Italian cities such as Genoa were able to expand their influence across much wider areas thanks largely to increased trade opportunities that arose out of these events. In 1217, the Fifth Crusade was launched by Pope Honorius III and King Andrew II of Hungary. The crusaders were led by John de Brienne, who had been chosen as king of Jerusalem in 1210 but never crowned due to a lack of funds. They sailed from Acre on July 16 with an army that included Hungarians, Germans and Frenchmen under their respective leaders, they also brought along some Venetian ships for transport purposes. After landing at Damietta in Egypt on August 5th, they quickly captured it after two days fighting against Muslim forces commanded by al Kamil. The crusaders then marched south towards Cairo where they set up camp outside its walls while negotiations began between them and al Kamil over control of Jerusalem which he refused to give away despite offering other concessions such as free access through his lands for Christian pilgrims traveling there or back home again safely without fear or molestation. In November however these talks broke down when news arrived that Frederick II's German troops had landed near Jaffa so instead both sides agreed upon a 10-year truce whereby Christians would be allowed into the city freely during this period provided no harm came either way something which ultimately proved unsuccessful because neither side kept their word fully afterwards leading eventually lead another war breaking out shortly thereafter. 1228 In 1228, Frederick II of Germany was elected King of Jerusalem and the Sixth Crusade began. He negotiated a treaty with al Kamil, Sultan of Egypt which allowed him to take control over much territory in Palestine including Bethlehem and Nazareth as well as other cities such as Jaffa. This agreement also included an eight-year truce between Christians and Muslims that would be renewed every four years if both sides agreed upon it. The Crusaders were able to reclaim some lost territories, but not all. They failed to capture Acre or Tyre for example due largely in part because there wasn't enough support from European rulers who had their own interests at heart rather than those of the Crusade itself. 
In addition, many Muslim leaders refused any kind negotiations so this further hindered progress made by Christian forces during this period time frame, 1229-39. Ultimately though Frederick's diplomatic efforts did bring about peace between two religions albeit temporarily until his death when hostilities resumed once again shortly thereafter under new leaderships on either side leading into what is known today Seventh Crusade, 1248-54. In 1248, Louis IX of France led the Seventh Crusade to Egypt. He was accompanied by a large army and fleet which included many nobles from all over Europe. The French forces were initially successful in capturing Damietta but they failed to take Cairo due to lack of supplies and reinforcements. After suffering heavy losses during their retreat, Louis decided to negotiate with Sultan al-Malik al-Kamil for peace terms that would allow him safe passage back home without further bloodshed or loss of territory on either side. Al-Kamil agreed and provided generous terms including free access through his lands as well as provisions for the return journey across the Mediterranean Sea, however he refused any payment from Louis's treasury despite being offered it several times throughout negotiations. In exchange, both sides promised not attack each other's territories again until after six years had passed since signing this treaty an agreement known today as the Treaty of Jaffa. Despite its success at achieving relative peace between two powerful states, the crusade ultimately ended in failure when most crusaders returned home empty-handed having accomplished nothing more than securing temporary respite from warring factions within Syria-Palestine region itself. In 1270, the Eighth Crusade was launched by Louis IX of France. The main objective of this crusade was to capture Tunis from its Muslim ruler and restore it as a Christian city-state. However, due to bad weather conditions and disease among his troops, Louis failed in achieving his goal. He died shortly after arriving at Tunis on August 25, 1270 leaving behind an army that had been decimated by illness and desertion, only about one-third remained alive when they returned home later that year without having achieved any success whatsoever against their enemies or even capturing the city itself. Despite these failures however there were still some successes for Christianity during this period such as Pope Gregory X's efforts towards reuniting Eastern Orthodoxy with Rome which eventually led to the Second Council of Lyons being held in May 1274 where both sides agreed upon various points including papal supremacy over all Christians regardless if they be Catholic or Orthodox alike thus ending centuries-long schism between East and West within Christendom once again unifying them under one banner, albeit temporarily. In 1271, the Ninth Crusade was launched by King Edward I of England. The main objective of this crusade was to recapture Jerusalem from Muslim control and restore Christian rule in Palestine. However, due to a lack of resources and support from other European powers, it failed miserably. After landing at Acre on July 9 with an army composed mainly of English knights and mercenaries hired for the purpose, Edward quickly captured Jaffa but then proceeded no further than Caesarea where he stayed until October before returning home without achieving any significant success or making any lasting impact upon Outremer, the crusader states. In addition to his military failure against Baybar's forces in Syria-Palestine, Diplomatic efforts were also unsuccessful as negotiations between him and Sultan Kalawin broke down over issues such as ransom payments for prisoners taken during previous crusades which had been promised but never delivered by earlier rulers like Louis IX who had made them part their treaties with Muslims leaders prior to Edward's arrival. This ultimately led both sides back into conflict once again after several years' peace following Richard's departure from Holy Land twelve years previously, thus ending what would be known historically as the Ninth Crusade. In Chapter 11, Stephen Runciman examines the later Crusades which took place from 1217 to 1453. 
he begins by discussing how these later crusading efforts were largely unsuccessful due to a lack of resources and support from Europe's rulers. The Fourth Crusade, 1202-2004, was diverted away from its intended target in Egypt towards Constantinople where it sacked the city instead. This event marked an end for Latin rule over much of Greece and Anatolia as well as weakening Byzantine power significantly. In contrast, Louis Ix's crusade, 1248-54, although ultimately failing militarily, did succeed in establishing French control over parts of Syria until 1291 when Acre fell after a long siege, marking an effective end for Christian presence there too. Other notable events include Edward I's campaign against Tunisian Muslims during his own crusade attempt, 1270, Baybar's victory at Ain Jalut leading to Mamluk dominance across Palestine, Charles IV's failed expedition into Lithuania with Teutonic Knights forces that ended up being defeated at Tannenberg slash Grunwald, 1410. Finally, he discusses how Ottoman expansion eventually led them taking Constantinople itself in 1453 thus ending any remaining hopes or plans for further crusades aimed at reclaiming Jerusalem or other holy sites under Muslim control. Chapter 12 of the History of the Crusades by Stephen Renseman covers the end of this period in history. It begins with a discussion on how Despite some successes and victories for both sides during these wars, ultimately it was an unsuccessful endeavor as neither side achieved their goals or objectives. This chapter then goes into detail about why this happened, from internal divisions within each camp to external factors such as changing political dynamics between Europe and Asia Minor which made continued crusading difficult if not impossible at times. Finally, there is a brief overview given regarding what became known as the Last Crusade, one final attempt to reclaim Jerusalem that ended up being fruitless due largely to logistical issues faced by those involved, such as lack of funds. In conclusion, although many people had hoped that through religious fervor they could achieve something great namely taking back control over holy sites like Jerusalem unfortunately it wasn't meant to be and after centuries-long struggle against Muslim forces in Middle East slash Asia Minor region eventually came grinding halt without any real success stories coming out from either side's efforts. Despite all its failures though we can still look upon time spent fighting for faith with admiration since even when things seemed hopelessly lost individuals never gave up hope nor stopped believing in cause itself no matter cost associated with doing so thus making legacy left behind by crusaders truly remarkable one indeed.